Hi guys, welcome to Pulse TV Live. I am Missy Molu, of course, as you know, and of course, as you know as well, today is Friday and today is all about the lifestyle, about the Pulse lifestyle, and we're keeping you on the Pulse of the most fabulous thing that there is. So that's why right now we have Juana Sambo here with us. And of course, if you don't know, then you better know. Yes, she is one of the premier designers in Nigeria and has just recently opened her store, right? Mm -hmm. In Lucky, like, her flagship store. So Juana, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Juana Sambo label, right? Mm -hmm. What is what is the Juana Sambo label? And what does the Juana Sambo label cater to who is the one assemble woman. woman yeah first of all we like to say our mantra is the one assemble woman is strong uh -huh. sexy and exotic okay so this means she's a woman who just like me <laughs> is strong yes and she has that appeal about her that you can you kind of can't place where she's from or mm -hmm. what she's about yeah so she's exotic she has the sex appeal she has a bit of everything in her okay and she is the kind of woman who wears clothes, not the other way around. You know how when you have people wear clothes and then it's like, well, her dress is nice, but she's not really... Yeah. Yeah, she's the kind of woman like who dresses, okay. yeah, and then okay. she looks amazing regardless mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. she wears. Yeah. Okay, so fantastic. Wonderful. And of course, the one ensemble dress will almost will always make the woman look absolutely exactly. stunning. Exactly. Right? It, it makes you feel like, oh, I have to, like, look, I'm sitting up straight. I have to look straight. <laughs> Pretty. Fabulous. Okay. So what's been, what's the journey been like? When was it, when did you wake up to say, I want to be a designer this okay. is my life my life's calling I know I know that that's a very interesting question because I never planned for this to be my life's calling mm -hmm. it was just basically um, I knew I always had a I mean I was very crafty I, knew okay. I was very I had a thing with my hands uh -huh. but I wasn't necessarily sure but about um, 2009 mm -hmm. in university I tried to it was one of those summers where nothing happened and I really wanted to wear really interesting clothes and there were no stores so much like it's 2009 there are no s stores that had like proper like stuff from Sarah stuff yeah, yeah. from like H&M that didn't look everywhere was half the time it was mostly Primark stuff of course and like yeah so I really wanted things that were cool and fun uh -huh. yet you know how Zara pieces are structured and exactly stuff. yeah really uh -huh. nice yeah and yeah so I decided to make the Ankara pieces very funky that's how I started my journey. So okay. I, was, I actually didn't plan to be a designer for the rest of my life because I studied international relations and diplomacy. Mm. So um, when that summer was whatever, I said, okay, well, how about I start making clothes for myself and my friends? And that's what I did. Okay. Yeah, so it was really... And then I kept on doing it and I realized, wow, this is really good. I want to do this. Like, uh -huh. I want to cater to yes. different... And then I started exploring different fabrics, different styles, different textures. Yes. You know, and then, yeah, that's how Lovely. Started. Okay, so... You started, and this is when you delved into it, and you're making clothes for your friends. Yeah. Okay. Now, what did your parents say? <gasps> Especially as you just literally <laughs> finished university and I it was international even... relations <laughs> and diplomacy. My dad said, "What? You're telling me you went to school? You went to Nigeria University? <laughs> and you want to be a tailor? You're a joker!" <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> These were his exact words. He said, "You're joking." I said no, Daddy. But I was like, nah, that's that. That's the last I'm hearing of it. I don't, I don't hear of it. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it was crazy. But I just, I didn't care what he had to say. I just kept doing what I like okay. to do. And then eventually, one day, I made like paper bags for the brand. And I said, oh, Daddy, do you like this paper bag? I was like, eh, it's pretty, but <laughs> <laughs> what? And then, so you're still doing this thing. I said, should I say, oh, Daddy, this is what I want to do. And then he was like. He's very easy. My dad's very open-minded. Okay. So he's, he, he, then he was like, well, good luck. At least you can't say I didn't pay for education. At least I did that. <laughs> so the rest is all yeah, up, up to you. Whatever yeah. you want to do yourself. Okay. Do it. And then, but I mean, it's been amazing because it's been so supportive. Oh, like, really? I mean, I, I don't know how my brand would still be in existence without my dad. Because okay. I mean, the biggest part is finance in Nigeria. Of course. Of course. Without him, I probably would have died because my dad's amazing initially he was no 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 but later I, he warmed up to it are, now you, he's are so, you daddy's he, little girl yeah i think yeah. so because <laughs> so. well i don't know i think so okay. i don't know uh -huh. my dad loves everyone of all course his kids. yes but yeah well are you okay so what yeah. in your family how many of you are there oh there's four of us there's four okay yeah, i and have um an older brother it's my uh -huh. twin brother okay and then i have um a sister mm -hmm. i have yeah 
I have two brothers and, and a sister. sister. Yeah. Okay. All right. You <laughs> seem a little like, oh, uh, well, yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. So basically, have your family embraced? I mean, your dad oh my was God. hesitant at first, and then yeah. how did the it's rest okay. of the act? Oh my God. Do you know why my dad accepted? Why? I literally moved out of the house. Oh. And I said, because my dad's house in Aja, and mm-hmm. I said, yeah, I'm moving to Lekki. And he's like, uh-huh. what do you mean you're moving to Lekki? Uh-huh. How old are you? I was like, how's that? I was 24. Uh-huh. So I'm moving. To, and he's like, what do you mean? Like, but how does it make sense? Like, I was like, but I have to do this. I have to do what I want uh-huh. to. And he's like, yeah, well, no, that can't work, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, well, I have to. And this is like, this is me standing my ground. Because otherwise, I mean, like for every single child, no matter how old you are, yeah. your, your father still thinks you're young. Of course. Still. But I realized, oh, yeah, I was getting older and I really wanted to do this mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he said, okay. No problem. And that's how I moved out. And then okay. I stood my ground. And then when I set up, it was my home and store at the same time. This is mm. the first place. Yeah. So I set it up and I was like, well, dad, this is what I want to do and stuff. And he was, I think, he was so proud at the fact that I actually stood up for myself. And like, I put an effort and he was like, okay, whatever I want to, I'll support you. Oh, like, yeah. that's lovely. Yeah. How have the rest of the family um, been? <gasps> Hmm. You know the mothers are easy now. Of They're course, just like, yes. oh, that's what you want to do. <laughs> ah, my daughter is a superstar. <laughs> she's so modest, but she's a superstar. Uh-huh. But my mom's amazing. My brother, he's uh-huh. actually. I mean, my brother was one of the pioneer fashion. Will I say bloggers, fashion mm-hmm. bloggers? Yeah. Yes, and them, but still fashion authorities in Nigeria yeah. because he started this blog called One Nigerian Boy. Mm-hmm. That's my twin brother. Mm-hmm. He's not my twin, but we call each other yeah. twins. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, he's been amazing. I mean, very instrumental in the growth of my brand because he would always motivate me okay. times when I was tired or I mean, because it gets depressing after a while. You're like, oh, well, we're making so many clothes. Nigeria's and embraced us. Yeah, here, da, da. but then he would really motivate me and my sister. Oh Lord, bless her soul. I mean, my entire family is amazing. Oh, like when it comes wonderful. to this, like. Yeah. Every time I complain about something, like just keep moving on, you'll be fine. Everyone just says to me, "You'll be fine." And yeah. somehow I've gotten so used to being fine that I have to. You're like, actually being yeah, fine. Yeah, I have no option but to be fine okay. and to still be consistent and do what I want. And oh, that's I think great. It's been great. Okay. Yeah. So the good thing is you have your family supporting you. Yeah. And um, what are the, what have been the challenges that you oh. faced with your brand, hmm. or with you as a person growing this brand? Okay, typically in Nigeria, the first problem is the light situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, for you to have a production factory, you have to have light 24-7. And then we have terrible power system, everyone knows. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, getting a factory or a workshop running is always hectic. I mean, it costs so much more. And then, two, is getting loans from banks. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you should, they should have... I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to say the name of a bank I went to and I asked for a loan when I was about to open my store, and then they said something about, oh, you don't have a nine to five, so they can't be sure they're getting their money back. And I said, oh, how about you see the books? Like we're making money, so I'm sure that we can, yeah. you know. And then they're like, no, unfortunately, you need to get a guarantor of someone who has a nine to five. And it was so depressing. But then I had to beg my dad, and I was like, okay. Yeah, but I mean, I tried to do it by myself. But mm-hmm. I mean, if you decide to do things like this in Nigeria by yourself, yeah, it's hard. It's that much harder. Yeah, and then there's tailors who are crazy, but eventually you figure them out. But I think the biggest challenge is not necessarily the staff or the workforce. Okay. It's basically the country. I mean, okay. no light, no mm-hmm. way to, I mean, assist like upcoming designers or brands or whatever it is. Because there's so many homegrown talents. Like exactly. even craftsmanship, there's so many people who mm-hmm. have like great ideas and have, but there's no way to get them to out actually there. to for them yeah. to explore it and yeah. everything. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. And then Juan Sambo in itself has started off and you said like, you know, you were done with university, you started yeah. making close friends yeah. and everything, your family supporting you. How has Juan Sambo, what is the involvement of Juan yeah. Sambo? Oh my God. First of all, I'll thank God because I'm a big like oh, I love God and mm. everything. But like I think it's been an amazing journey so far. Considering when I started, I had no idea or no plan of what I wanted. I just knew I wanted to grow, build a brand. Okay. I, didn't, I wasn't sure of how much growth. I mean, you know, you have all these plans and stuff. But so far, it's been great because we've gotten awarded like um, Red Toy Brand of the Year oh, from wow. Ghana. Yeah. Okay. This is, um, last year glitz africa fashion week mm-hmm. Christmas brand of the year we got featured as like um um talents to watch out for in okay. msn africa yeah we've got in we've done so many runway shows like i'm tired of like i can't even count but yeah. we've done so many collections and the brand in itself is i mean i 
part of the things that made me really aware of how much work I've put into the brand yeah. was the fact that when I opened the flagship store, I had, I mean, you know, because of where I was, I, had, I knew all of my customers, so to speak. It was a closed space, so it was kind of like appointment only, okay. private yeah. viewing and stuff. And then when we opened the store, I mean, I have so many walk-ins and it's a bad habit, but I always ask people, oh, did you stop because of the sign or did you stop because, and then they're like, oh, no, we know when the sign but I'm like, you do so it's overwhelming <laughs> yeah. and then considering like throughout everything yeah i didn't even one of the issues is can we please have more people more creatives in nigeria who are young and are willing to work and not think that fashion is just about being pretty there's work it's work yeah it's really so much work okay. you know so yeah but i think when it's not, the brand has grown way beyond like my biggest imagination oh, wow. yeah now we're strong i mean you can actually say we have like a I can't say I'm in clients they have, but it's, 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 <laughs> I'm excited for the future. Okay. And I mean, like tomorrow, I mean, yes. every day I wake up now that I have a store, I'm more excited for the next day because it's just been great. Oh, that's it's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, tomorrow are the AMV series, yes. yes. Who are you styling? I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but I'm definitely styling someone. Someone very special to the award show. Someone very special to the award show. Yeah, award show. Okay. So, every, okay. I mean, because so, if I say who it is, then everybody will be like, yeah, you know, yeah. Okay, what's so going you know, on? Yeah. Okay, I totally get that. So, mm -hmm. we'll wait till next week and yes, then we'll, we'll, you, we'll have you here Thanks. for our f Pulse Fashion jury yay okay and then we, we're gonna look through all the fashion that <laughs> was happening amazing. at the amvcas mm -hmm. it'll and be very interesting exactly it, it very definitely interesting. It's always will. interesting to be here oh yes i can't wait are you going to go um no i'm not i'm very i don't really like events really award shows yeah okay I, i'm the kind of person who likes my brand to speak for itself as opposed to and it's not about you it's, yeah, it's about, about the brand me, basically about the brand because in nigeria it's very easy or everywhere i mean it's very easy for you to um focus on the creative not the brand itself mm -hmm. so i mean you tend to have people inviting you to shows and stuff but then it doesn't translate to funds because mm. like oh yeah it's a business so it of has to course grow. yes and the funds have to keep on yeah. hitting in the cha-ching yeah, you, need, you yeah. need to hear it's it. better to put things on people like you i mean <laughs> Yes, like we'll you talk guys about who are, yeah you we'll know talk, we we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk okay so that's great so i mean the one assembler woman has evolved what okay. is the one assembler woman saying now i mean you told us what the one assembler woman embodies mm -hmm. and what the one assembler woman is about yeah what is the one assembler woman wearing right now what's the look what's the feel that's the one assembler woman is wearing what i'm wearing half the time Okay. This is from our most recent collection, okay. our Spring Summer 2015 collection. Mm -hmm. It's called the Selling Pair. Okay. On the runway, it was um, it was in red, but now we make them in several colors. Mm -hmm. The one assemble woman is now more aware of herself. She's now more conscious of who she is. So she knows her flaws and how to hide them. Okay. She knows the outfits that work best for her. She knows not to worry about, oh, I feel like my arms are so fat. She has like this. I mean, I have perfect clothes cover my arms, so you can't tell if my arms are fat. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. the one sample one is now more aware. So we are tailoring clothes basically to fit the one, uh, the literally a more mature woman's body. Okay. So almost as though we have um, clothes for the carefree woman, mm -hmm. but we're now growing as the brand has grown. We've grown to understand the woman's body more. Mm -hmm. So we kind of now have more clothes for different body types, ah, different floors, different. But still, she looks amazing. Regardless. Oh wow, yeah, that's, that's amazing. amazing. So now, so that's what's going on. Runway shows. Yeah. How many do you do in a year? Um, typically, on a let's say an average of three. In a year. Three in a year. Yeah. Okay. And um, how long does it take to put a collection together for a runway show? Oh my god. It takes. I mean, putting together a collection for a runway show is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. From the first to the last one, you almost immediately start producing a new collection mm -hmm. when the last one is done. Okay. And then what we do is we just pick out pieces. Like sometimes you have so many. Like the way I get inspiration is just. I mean, I'm looking at the floor now and I'm inspired. I think of like okay. an outfit that can come from like the colors or something okay. so every time i get an idea i sketch it and then if i if i'm not able to sketch it at that time i sketch it when i can okay. and then you start to put together pieces but also because you have to if you're working with international standards mm -hmm. you have to check the pantone calendar for what colors work you have to check what what trends are on now okay. so you can't go on making like what 
kimonos this is like last season exactly. when everyone's making structured clothing yeah. or like more i mean sophisticated pieces mm-hmm. you see what i mean so yeah it's an ongoing process so you just keep modifying the styles you already have in existence okay and then work with what works at the time so it depends on what um there's always this trend forecasting that's mm-hmm. what my brother does for me at, um he lives in london he okay. does. he's the trend forecaster for one assembly okay so basically he tells us before time what trends are on okay. now okay so when a new collection is about to come up we decide okay these are the trends we have to fix this the trends the colors these are the textures these are what people want all right now. okay yeah so we make a collection tailored around that but then still try to make it african yet international fantastic so um do you source your fabrics from here i source my fabrics from everywhere okay but yes also here but another thing is the fabrics we source from here i brought from everywhere aha uh-huh. yeah so, so they're not always, made yes, here so you might as well just get them from the sources well just, exactly what are your major countries that you look at to turkey actually, okay london mm-hmm. yeah because it seems because i've heard somebody else was talking to me about how they want to start a i believe it's a uh, an, a fashion line basically mm-hmm. and they're going to manufacture in yeah. Turkey yeah. that sort of thing obviously it's easy is it yeah. easier to actually get in touch with Turkey and um, it is easier is it because exactly? they have factories that produce clothing okay. so as opposed to Nigeria where the fabrics you source I mean you can see 10,000 other people wearing it because part of the reasons why you're a designer is because your pieces are exclusive mm-hmm. so basically you make your own prints you tailor mm-hmm. them to what the market is saying to the styles that are on trend okay. so I mean if you go to the market and sourced a, a fabric from like a local dealer and maybe you had what 50 yards you mm-hmm. buy 50 yards when um sometimes these people because they purchase it from other people there's other people who have probably bought that same fabric yeah so imagine making making a collection with that fabric and you'd say oh it's priced at this um whatever this is and then you also the reasons why your prices are different from what the regular market guy is saying is because you have cost of production you have of all course. the things you put into factor and of then course. someone else goes to buy the same exact fabric for three naira mm. and then maybe you bought it for three naira as well but then it's priced at 50 naira mm-hmm. it's crazy when she can easily just go and make the same style and say it's a one assemble piece but i mean the only difference between what she would make and what we would make is that i mean when a copy is a copy you can tell yeah right i mean yeah. the finish the look the fit it would be different Friend, uh-huh. it's still crazy for you to that's it's better to source abroad because then you're sure if you manufacture prints for you that's it's just yours you. it's, it's just not, yours yeah, it's not no going to be in the market exactly or flooding the market no that sort of thing flooding, yeah. okay that makes a lot of sense so for example what advice would you have for an up-and-coming designer what are the pitfalls to look out for what do they have to look forward to yeah. basically i think the most important thing to look forward to is where you want to go Mm-hmm. as opposed to where you are or as opposed to where the, what the challenges are at the moment because it's honestly it's a nerve-wracking business oh, wow it's a for an emotional person i mean you have to be strong because mm-hmm. i mean first of all you have in production you have so many mishaps half the time maybe you dream a style and then trying to put it to life is is always like the hardest part yeah. putting style to life because then maybe it's you, you try to work with silk, but silk doesn't flow as good as chiffon does, uh-huh. so it's cr- yeah, I mean, and then maybe the generality of, oh, how many more people are buying my pieces, I think the best thing to look forward to is the future, what you want, what you think your brand should be, and just yeah. consistency is key. There's a there's a saying that goes, the harder you walk, the luckier you get, mm-hmm. have you ever heard it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I think that's, that's my mantra, so I feel like, as long as you keep working hard, you keep getting lucky and things will fall into place. That's great. Yeah, okay, that's good what. stuff. So, um, how far? The Wan Ensemble brand is, you know, has its flagship store now. Where is Wan Ensemble going? What's the future? What's in the future for Wan Ensemble? The future for Wan Ensemble is to be in at least five major countries in Africa. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not necessarily interested in Europe or America, not because they're not great places to be, but I feel like there are so many African countries that need brands that are homegrown. So I'm kind of trying to create a brand that is made for Africa by Africans. Oh, yes, great I mean, stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I mean, I think we've pretty much squeezed you dry. Yeah, yeah. With all the information. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just one last question, though. In, in, in working this hard and building the brand and whatnot, what time do you have for relationships? <laughs> And how's, how does it affect relationships? <laughs> I think the most important part is being with someone who's understanding. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, initially it might be hard being with someone, but then whoever you're with has to be understanding. Because that's the only way you can yeah. 
survive in a relationship that I mean because we work late nights sometimes when we have to deliver mm-hmm, deadlines mm-hmm. kind of stuff so it's just being with someone who's understanding oh that's lovely being with <laughs> someone who's understanding while building the brand that's going to take over Africa yes. that is fantastic yeah. alright Wana thank you very very much <laughs> thank you for, for being me. here with us and of course we will be looking out for you next week you should. when we're going to have the pulse of fashion jury Wana Sambo is going to be one of our jury members while we listen while we actually no not listen while we watch and uh judge oh yes yeah while we watch and pass judgment on all the fashion <laughs> yeah. that's happening at the amvcas yeah. tomorrow all right so this is pulse tv live this of course has been a pulse exclusive interview and i am missy molu this is Juan Sambo. we shall be back in just a little bit bye